Quite still, please. I'll have a print along this afternoon, sir. Very good. Now, before you dismiss and start the real business of training as naval fighter pilots, I want to warn you that this photograph has not been taken just to give you something to send home. A copy of it will go on the wall of my office with the name of each one of you on it. You've already learnt to fly. Here you will be taught to apply your flying to fighting. And when I say fighting, I don't mean the captains of the cloud stuff that you see on the movies. Some of you may fail to make the grade, but most of you, I hope, will turn Gee, out... What couldn't I do to a pine? Quiet, boss. ...with a sound knowledge of how to fight your aircraft. It's important for you to learn that any accidents you may have will be your fault. There is no such thing as bad luck, which is poor camouflage for carelessness. And carelessness is the fighter pilot's worst crime. Don't forget, your photographs will be on my wall, together with a progress chart, which will show how much you fly, what you do, and how you do it. By the time you leave us, I shall have a pretty good idea of what sort of fighter pilots you're turning out to be. Well, a fairly small course. You've got eight weeks for them, so I don't think you'll have any bother getting through. Their records seem to be OK. One fellow in your lot, Tommy, you may have a spot to bother with. Robinson. Right, I'll keep my eye on him, sir. The rest are all right. That's all. I'll come down and see the first lot off with you. Yep. That's not so bad, Smith. Don't forget about putting your ass in fine pitch before you come into land. No, sir. Quite your offer, bud. Robinson, you're next. Yes, sir. Right, Robinson, I want you to go right through the starting up drill. Starting up drill? Blimey, I invented it. Switch on generator. Plug in RT. Put RT to receive. Switch on undercarriage lights. Put petrol on reserve. Use the doper. Switch on starter mag. Switch on mag switches. Starter up. Switch off starter mag. Screw up doper and Bob's your uncle. Right, sir. Ready to take off? Nothing you've forgotten? No, sir. Sure. Yes, sir. Right. Then we'll assume we've been airborne for an hour and a half. Say on a trip from Scotland to London. OK, come in and land. Right here, sir. Blimey, what is this? Prep school for kids? Smart guy, eh? How's that, sir? Not too bad, Robinson. We'll just check through this imaginary trip of yours from Scotland to London. According to your way of thinking, you're in London now, aren't you? Yes, sir. Well, listen to me, bright boy. You're probably in the drink somewhere around Loch Lomond. Take a look at that. You're still on reserve tank. This may seem a lot of kid stuff to some of you. 
But believe me, unless you can get this cockpit drill into your fat noodles, your life as pilots are going to be pretty short. Forgetfulness on the deck is bad enough, but in the air it's fatal. Well, this will be your first trip from the fighting school. You've all flown a hurry before, so let's see what sort of show you can put up. We've all been through the cockpit drill, so we'll say no more about that. Remember the main points. RT drill. Don't leave your transmitter on. And don't take off on gravity. OK, off you go. We'll be looking out for you on the runway. What does he think he's doing? I don't know, it's one of your blokes, not mine. Well, why in the blazes can't he let the machine fly itself off instead of trying to dig holes in the deck? Take a look at that. Head in the office again. Beats me why some of them can't get their undercut up without looking around for the handle. He'd be a lot of use on a moving deck. Looks like he's frightened of using his rudder. Zebra, Opa Orange calling. Force landing, engine failure. Opa? Hello, Opa Orange. Zebra answering. OK, out. Sir, Opa Orange says he's going to make a forced landing. Engine trouble. Ask him if he's on main. Yes, sir. Hello, Opa Orange. Opa Orange, Zebra calling. Are you on main tanks? Over. Hello, Zebra. Opa Orange answering. OK now. Out. OK. I heard him. Blasted idiot. Yes, sir. OK. Dispersal, please. OK. I'll take it. Yes? Robinson and Ofer Orange, one of your blokes. Yes, why? What's up? Oh, nothing much. Just tried to kill himself with a gravity, Charlie. Silly young ass. Considered himself damned lucky to get away with it this time. OK, I'll see him when he comes down. Gravity, Charlie.
think of that? Sure, bloody carelessness. What the devil? I wouldn't mind betting that young idiot's got his radio shut. I don't like that. No, not do I. There goes another. They won't watch their airspeed when their engines fail. Crash wagon? Not much use. Too far off. Well, we seem to be blessed with the usual sprinkling of careless clots. What about Jenkins? Nothing through yet, is there? No, not yet. Chief Instructor here. Yes? Where? Oh. Pity. I'm sorry. Jenkins is headed. Here. Yeah. A little more attention to the elementary principles of flying and he might have made a good fighter pilot. I'm going to begin this practical instruction by running through the standard RT procedure. I want you to get a hold of this first. At the same time, bearing in mind the points I made in my lecture on voice production. First thing then is the method of establishing contact with an aircraft or ground station. Now, when we go to the cubicles, I shall want each of you to call me up in turn and make contact with me in the way I outlined in my lecture yesterday. All right, we'll break up and carry on to the cubicles. Is that the control tower, sir? No, it's just along at the end of the block here. If you'll follow me, I'll show you. Oh, messages to you now, Blue Two. Hello, Blue Two. Clifton calling. Return to base. Over. Hello, Clifton. Blue Two answering. OK. Over. How's that? Uh, no, Blue Two. That message should end with the word out. You only say over when you expect a reply. You're a liar. Yeah, I said out. You want a D, did you, Jay? Hello, Yellow One. Clifton calling. Oh, just a minute. Just a minute, John. What is your victor? Over. Uh, he hello, Clifton. Uh, yellow, yellow One answering. Uh, vector 090. Out. Well, that's how it's done. Oh. Well, there are several points there, Yellow One. First of all, you should never put a transmitter on until you're perfectly certain what you want to say. Any sort of hesitancy is a very bad fault indeed over the RT. The next thing is the pronunciation of figures. 
should be 090, not 090. The ending to that message should be over and not out, because you are making a report and therefore require acknowledgement. Finally, there's a hell of a lot of off-stage noise going on in there anyway. This may seem elementary to you, but it requires concentration if you're going to get the hang of it. If you don't, you're going to be a perfect bloody nuisance to anybody flying on the same frequency. Apart from that, you may need RT sometime to get you out of a tough spot. So pipe down and let's get on with the job. Boy, what a strip. That's no strip, chum. That's the whole damn carpet. <laughs> Yellow 2, I want you to report landed and go through the switching off procedure. Over to Yellow 2. Hello, Clifton. Yellow 2 calling. Pancake, switching off. Over up. Hello, Yellow 2. Clifton answering. OK, switch off. Off. Smith, Robinson. I want you to go to Western Zoyan Aerodrome. There it is. Report what types of aircraft they've got on the ground, how many hangars they've got. Can okay. we land there, sir? No, second a thousand feet. Tell me what it looks like when you come back. Shove off right away. Yes, away we go. Right, right huh? Well, we've got a good can. How about you? Yes, I was with you. Left hand circuit, okay? Aye, aye, sir. Aye. Robinson? Sir? Now, don't forget your RT procedure, and above all, don't leave your transmitter on. No, I won't do that, sir. Well, see you don't. Right, sir. Hello, Leader. Zebra answering. Okay, scramble. Out. Hello, Zebra. Sugar calling. Over. Hello, S for sugar. Zebra answering. Strength five. Over. Hello, Zebra. Sugar answering. Strength five. Out. Hello, Zebra. Orange calling. Over. Orange calling. Over. Hello, O for orange, zebra answering, strength five, over. Hello, zebra, O for orange answering, strength five, out.
Hello, Zebra. Sugar calling. Request homing vector. Over. Hello, S for Sugar. Zebra answering. OK, stand by. Over. Hello, Zebra. Sugar answering. OK, out. S for Sugar wants a homing vector, sir. Right. Orange, OK, stand by, out. Over Orange wants homing vector, sir. Oh, tell Over Orange to orbit and stand by. We are homing another aircraft. Yes, sir. Hello, O for Orange, Zebra calling. Orbit and stand by. We are homing another aircraft, over. Hello, Zebra, Orange answering. OK, out. Operator. Yes, sir. Tell S for sugar to orbit and give a tuning transmission. Aye, aye, sir. Hello, S for sugar, zebra calling. Orbit and give tuning transmission. Over. Hello, zebra. Sugar answering. Here is the tuning transmission. One, two, three, four, five. For sugar, zebra answering. Okay, stand by. Out. I think Over Orange has left his transmitter on, sir. Oh, has he? Better call the officer of the watch. I can't get a bearing on S for sugar. Over Orange has left his transmitter on. Duty officer, please. Off the watch, huh? Okay, we'll get another transmission. Try and get a rough bearing. Ask Sugar for another tuning transmission. Yes, sir. Hello, S for Sugar. Hello, S for Sugar. Zebra calling. Give another tuning transmission. Over. Hello, Zebra. Sugar answering. Say again, please. Say again. Over. For sugar, zebra answering. I say again, give another tuning transmission. Over. Hello, zebra. Hello, zebra. Sugar answering. Say again, please. Say again. Strength two. Over. Hello, S for sugar. Hello, S for sugar. Zebra answering. I say again, give another tuning transmission. Over. There's no reply from S for sugar, sir. He's not receiving us. Oh, all right. Uh, continue to call him at three minute intervals. Oh, blast orange. Why must these people leave their transmitters on? Zebra, orange calling, over. Hello, Zebra, hello, Zebra, orange calling, orange calling, over. Hello, Zebra, hello, Zebra, over, orange calling, over, orange calling, over to you, over. Out of range.
And so this film on fighter tactics is to explain to you what attacks you will use at sea and how you are led up to them during your course here. Right operator, let her go. Lights, please. Well, you've seen the methods you'll use to get within range of the enemy. But never forget that once there, if you can't shoot straight, you might just as well have stayed on the deck. We have here many synthetic training devices to help you to estimate and apply deflection. Use them intelligently, and by the time you leave us, you should be able not only to get within range of the enemy, but to knock him down when you got there. So much for the theory siding. I'll run over the main points once again. First of all, your positioning. Position yourselves well outside the target. Don't crowd it. And from your position, you make your approach on the curve pursuit which you start at about 90 degrees off, 400 yards. Put your sight behind the aircraft, pull it through, at about 60 degrees off, and by the time you've got it through, got your line, laid your deflection, you will be at about 30 degrees off, 300 yards, which is just where you want to be. Okay? Yeah. And don't forget to time your turn in correctly. If you start too soon, you'll have to do a hell of a steep turn, which will just make you a skid and slide all over the sky. And if you start too late, you'll just get left behind. Okay? Yes, that's right. Finally, I want you to be very careful of your line, as a small line error will result in a miss. And whatever you do, don't let the target fly through your sight. Right, now I want you to split up into groups and go to the various synthetic trainers where you'll get some idea of what's going on in the air tomorrow. Okay, Dawson, I want you to come over the side. The rest of you carry on. Switch on. Set your side on the model. What angle do you make it? 30 degrees. What allowance do you make for that? Well, it's a J88 carrying bombs, and therefore its speed is uh, about 200 miles an hour, and the de deflection for that speed would be 50%, i.e. 100 miles an hour. Right. The deflection is all right, but you seem to have made rather a large line error. Take another look, and I'll show you what I mean. Now tell me when I got one of these lines parallel to the nose and tail. Okay. Now you can see your error. Yes, I'm certainly much too high. All right, this is the Hudson trainer. It's designed to teach you angle judging and the application of reflection. They won't make many line errors as the target's flying straight from level. All right, I can set the target. Target at JU-88, cruising at 200 miles an hour. What's the angle? 30 degrees. Right, have a crack at it and see if you can light the lamp. Okay? Okay. Right, we'll try another angle now. Now, this device will give you a good idea of sighting under actual firing conditions. You'll find the First exercise is easy enough if you follow out these cards. Right, Jackson, you're first. Hey, Jackson, go easy with that. That's a sight, not a handle. I'm sorry, sir. Okay, hop in.
Oh, how was that, sir? Fairly got him that time, didn't I? Well, yes, but you've been in pretty bad state yourself. You'd be out of ammunition and a real scrap, and your guns would be out of action anyway. The important thing is to get home on the target at once, before the fighter had the chance to avoid you or get at you. A quick, steady burst, what you want. Three seconds is quite enough for most things. I've seen worse. You did go on the target. Okay, next. Now you're going to try putting into practice all the theory you've learned. And don't forget it the moment you get in the air. I've told you what to do. A sighting burst from a stern, that's for the film assessing people. Then three port and three starboard attacks. All clear? Right. Okay. And remember, when you come down, your films will be assessed and you will be able to see exactly what you did in those attacks. I'll give you the word when to go into the attack. Okay? Right, now hop off and get ready. Uh, Jackson, don't forget your green section. Yes, well done. Hey, and if I'm scooting, you keep here in my tail. Okay. Calling. Commence exercise. Out. Okay, out. Hello, green one. Green leader calling. Commence exercise. Out. Green one, green leader calling. For Pete's sake, keep her steady and don't start your attacks from so high. Boy, that should be pretty good. Nothing much wrong with that. Okay, really clobbered him all over, hitting him all the way down, all the way in. Well, not too bad at all, chaps. Mason, you seem about right, I think. You're a bit out of range, though, Leeming. Oh. You're breaking away too soon. Oh, you know, right. you want to press home your attack a bit more. Oh, there you are, Jackson. That wasn't too bad on the whole. You were a little quick. You, Jackson, you're starting too high and not giving yourself time to steady up. You made the turn too tight and started it too late. Yes. You'll probably find the target's flown straight through your sights. Oh, I see. Anyway, we'll see when the assessment comes along. Right, that's all for now. OK, Chief.
I've now got a report on your tax. Remember, your instructor told you to get accurate details of your tax and the assessment forms. Well, here they are. This is yours, Brown. Your tax are nice and steady. Your reflection was good. But you aim consistently high throughout the attack. Now cast your mind back to the actual attacks. Have you got all that? Yes. Jackson, this is yours. Well, what happened to you? Your attacks all over the place. You never fired more than half a second. Then your reflection allowance is much too small. So in future, start your tax farther away and just above the target. And then you will have plenty of time to steady down. Remember, start your turn in slowly. Go into your curve of pursuit in plenty of time and then you can adjust your deflection steadily. Never rush it. Nice spot to follow me, leader. Tommy, I think, with young Smith. Smith. Yes, I had him up dog fighting the other day. Made me sweat blood keeping him off the tail. Turned out to be a pretty good lot, hadn't they? Not bad at all, sir. Smith turned out exceptionally well. Robinson, as you know, went to hospital and he's still there. Jenkins wrote himself off and six thousand pounds worth of hurricane into the bargain. That's the rest. Well, God knows they're not inspired aviators, but they've applied themselves with common sense. And I'd rather have reliable types like that than all the brilliant geniuses in the world. All right, you are. Just a moment, sir. Yeah. 
Here they go, on that bell bet. Pretty good. They'll do. I wouldn't mind having them in my own squadron. Any one of them.